You know how the British countryside is represented in literature. It's a green and pleasant land, a precious stone inside a silver sea. Shakespeare called it another Eden. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Now here's the reality. Private water companies are dumping huge amounts of raw sewage in Britain's rivers and off its coastlines. They're doing so to save money, to ensure returns for shareholders, and by extension, to guarantee massive salaries for bosses at the top. According to the Environment Agency, raw sewage was pumped into rivers and coasts 375,000 times in 2021. That's more than 1,000 times a day on average. That sheer volume is new, with untreated sewage discharges increasing 27 times over the last five years. They've not doubled or tripled, they've increased by 27 times. Now, this deluge of literal crap we all keep hearing about isn't just limited to coastlines and beaches. According to the Environmental Audit Committee, only 14% of English rivers meet good ecological status. But here's the killer line. Not a single river in England has received a completely clean bill of health when it comes to chemical contamination. Not one. Not one river. This issue is worse in England than almost anywhere else in Europe. We ranked last for water cleanliness in 2020, but it's nothing to do with Brexit. As easy an answer as that might seem, it's about low regulation and putting profit over a clean environment. This problem was here and getting worse year after year before Britain left the European Union. The reason raw sewage is flushed into our waterways is because England has a combined sewage system that carries rainwater alongside wastewater from toilets and kitchens in the same pipes the treatment works. During periods of heavy rainfall, which happens quite frequently in England, you may have noticed, the pipes are inundated. So, to avoid raw sewage flooding homes and roads, it's temporarily discharged into the sea and rivers. This is meant to be under exceptional circumstances, but 375,000 times a year doesn't seem very exceptional to me. So the root cause is that the water companies, privatised 30 years ago, aren't paying to maintain, let alone upgrade, their infrastructure. But perhaps that's because the money they've made these last three decades has gone towards cheaper bills. The private sector puts the customer first after all. Sadly, the opposite has happened. Water bills have risen by 50% more than inflation since 1989. Turns out the public are paying more than ever for crumbling infrastructure left to rot. So where's the money going? Well, since 1989, when water was privatised, shareholders of private water companies have received £72 billion in dividends. £72 billion. That's money that could have been spent on keeping infrastructure in top nick. You could have lower bills too, heaven forbid. Thames Water have paid £1.6 billion in dividends over the past 12 years. You'd think that sort of money could help them fix their creaking pipes. Apparently not. Meanwhile, Yorkshire Water paid £52 million in dividends just last year. This is a company which leaks 291 million litres of water every day, according to industry figures. Remember that next time there's a hosepipe ban. Naughty you, you drench the begonias. Seven Trent Water, which serves the Midlands, paid £254 million in dividends last year and £2.5 billion in dividends over the past 12 years. Yet over a three-year period, they leaked an average 446 million litres of water a day. Waste. High bills and dumping sewage where kids play and decimating wildlife. Now, in most places, this would be a failure. But in Britain, these are the successes of the privatised water industry. This is what the pundits on TV and the big brains at Westminster call modernisation. Of course it's not. It's organised theft and vandalism. But you're the little people. Your opinion doesn't matter. Of course, it's not just shareholders that benefit from what is essentially a scam. The bosses of England's privately owned water companies, who give this farce a veneer of respectability, have banked £58 million in pay and benefits over the last five years. Say hello to Sarah Bentley. She's CEO of Thames Water and earned £1.6 million last year. She must have done a great job to earn so much money. Perhaps Thames or one of the good guys. Think again. They were fined £4 million for dumping an estimated half a million litres of raw sewage into two streams in Oxford in 2016. Then there's Liv Garfield. She's the CEO of Seven Trent. Last year, Garfield banked £3.9 million, about 24 times what the Prime Minister earns. She's made £7 million since 2020. She must be doing an amazing job, right? Well, actually, last December, Seven were fined £1.5 million for illegally discharging sewage from a treatment works in Worcestershire. Now, if you heard someone was earning £7 million and the business was involved in illegal activity, you'd presume they were involved in drugs or arms dealing. You certainly think somebody would be going to prison. But no. 
For Britain's privatised water companies, that's business as usual. The Worcestershire episode wasn't isolated, by the way. 360,000 litres of raw sewage were discharged from four seven plants after 2017, something the Environment Agency called completely unacceptable. It's so unacceptable the company's boss is earning 24 times more than the Prime Minister. Can you imagine? This is awful. How dare you? By the way, enjoy your £7 million. Keep this up. Maybe you'll get an MBE. Then there's Peter Simpson. He's the boss of Anglian Water and earned £1.3 million last year. According to government data, Anglian Water discharged water and sewage via storm overflows for almost 200,000 hours last year. But I thought these discharges only happened in exceptional circumstances. And finally, there's Steve Mogford. Last year, Steve earned almost £3.1 million as CEO of United Utilities. And given he owns an island home, you'd think Mogford might be sensitive about the condition of coastal waters. I mean, there's one problem. Mogford's island home is a villa on the island of Menorca. The water there is crystal clear, I'm sure. But given the money these guys are all earning, they must be working overtime to sort this out, surely. Well, actually, many of them have second jobs. Nicholas Shaw, the head of Yorkshire Water, earned £115,000 last year on the board of International Airlines Group. They own BA, British Airways. Heidi Mottram, who earned £648,000 as boss of Northumbrian Water, is also a non-executive director at energy firm Centrica. Steve Mogford, with his villa in Menorca, is a non-executive director for defence firm Kinetic. Maybe he invoices them from a sun lounger at his home in the Balearics. Perhaps he's sipping on a pina colada too. High bills, raw sewage dumped in waterways, and yet those at the top make megabucks. It doesn't make sense. What are they being rewarded for exactly? It's not cheap bills, great customer service, or environmental performance. And why do other companies want them? The answer is incredibly simple. They are doing a fantastic job of ripping consumers and the taxpayer off. And in corporate Britain, that is classed as high performance. Just like Royal Mail, BT and the private rail operators, the water companies are full of business school execs taking the rest of us for fools. They float from industry to industry while the basic infrastructure of the country is driven into the ground. And workers who keep services alive, well, they're expected to get poorer. But shareholders get their dividends, and that's all that matters. The water companies behave like this for a simple reason, because they can get away with it. They can raise bills, not invest, dump sewage, pay dividends, and bosses earn a king's ransom because there are incentives to behave badly. It's like rewarding a child every time they scream or smash something up. What do you think is going to happen? Despite all that, there's a very simple, effective way to turn this problem around. Send water bosses to jail if their companies dump raw sewage. After all, that's what normally happens when you destroy public space to enrich yourself. Think that's too much? Think I'm going overboard? Well, it turns out the head of the Environment Agency, Emma Howard Boyd, agrees with me. She said she'd like to see prison sentences for chief executives and board members whose company is responsible for the most serious incidents, adding company directors should be struck off. That sounds dangerously close to actually doing something. Be careful there, Emma. You might not win any friends in Westminster if you say those sorts of things. You might upset the business school execs. The Great British Water Con must come to an end. Ultimately, that means public ownership and reinvesting profits back into infrastructure, heaven forbid. But until then, we need to see something which is common sense to most people. If an organisation breaks the law under your watch, then you pay the price. That's what leadership is meant to mean, responsibility, not villas abroad and expensive cars. In the 1970s, the public was told trade unions were too powerful, that they were overmighty. It's a different world today, of course, but if you want to know who's to blame for why Britain increasingly doesn't work, then start with the bosses at its privatised utility companies, especially water. There's a very simple equation here. A child could grasp it. The more broken this country becomes, the more money these people make. It's really that simple.